video provides an overview of how to administer a peripheral nerve block, also called regional anesthesia. The primary use of this procedure is for the case of hand lacerations, as demonstrated in this video. However, this procedure can be performed for a variety of conditions, including dislocations, paronychia, and felon drainage. We will demonstrate the administration of both a digital nerve block and a wrist block. Local anesthesia is achieved by subcutaneous injection and infiltration of anesthetic agents at the margins of a wound. In contrast, a peripheral nerve block is achieved by injection of local anesthetic solutions around specific peripheral nerves in order to anesthetize the entire sensory distribution of the nerve. An advantage of a peripheral nerve block for repair of a superficial hand laceration is that a decreased amount of a local anesthetic agent is required for anesthesia, which can decrease the risk of anesthetic-induced toxic effects. Other advantages as compared with local anesthetic infiltration are a less painful injection and less distortion of the tissue. These features can aid in repair of the laceration. Peripheral nerve block for the repair of a superficial hand laceration requires a high degree of cooperation from the patient. The patient must remain still and must be able to communicate with the clinician during the preparation and the procedure. This video does not cover the repair of deep hand lacerations. You may need to consult a hand specialist for the evaluation and repair of such wounds, as some wounds may require surgical intervention in the operating room. The technique shown here for inducing peripheral nerve block of the hand is based on locating surface anatomical landmarks for the digital nerve at the finger and for the radial, median, and ulnar nerves at the wrist. Ultrasound-guided techniques allow visualization of anatomic structures. These techniques require special training and are not demonstrated in this video. Peripheral nerve block is indicated when there is a need for surgical anesthesia in a conscious patient. Patients with a superficial laceration of a single finger may benefit from a digital nerve block. A wrist block may be indicated if lacerations involve multiple fingers, if the injury requires extensive irrigation or debridement, if the anatomy of the finger is distorted by swelling or trauma, or if the laceration is proximal to the finger. Inducing peripheral nerve block for superficial hand laceration is contraindicated in patients who are unable to follow instructions and who are unable to communicate severe pain on injection of local anesthetic. Such pain is an indicator of intraneural injection, which can produce ischemic nerve injury. The administration of an anesthetic is also contraindicated in patients who have distorted or obliterated anatomical landmarks, who have an infection in the proposed area of injection, or who have a history of allergic reaction to the local anesthetic agent. Gather the necessary equipment. You will need a face shield, water, soap, a hand towel, a water absorbent underpad, sterile and non-sterile gloves, a 10cc control syringe, 1-2% to lidocaine or 0.5% bupivacaine used for the wrist and not for the digital block, antiseptic solution containing chlorhexidine or povidone iodine, a 3.5 cm 18 gauge needle, and a 3.75 cm 25 gauge or 27 gauge safety needle. Explain the indication for the procedure to the patient and then describe the procedure and its benefits, risks, and potential complications. Ask about latex or iodine allergies. Examine the patient to evaluate and document any existing neurologic injury, such as any loss of sensory or motor function in the hand resulting from damage to the radial, median, or ulnar nerves, any peripheral neuropathy, including diabetic neuropathy, and any acute injury. A complete sensory and motor examination should be performed and is beyond the scope of this video. Disinfect the site where you intend to inject the local anesthetic. Using a back-and-forth wiping motion, clean the skin with an antiseptic solution such as chlorhexidine or povidone iodine. Don a face shield and then wash and disinfect your hands. Open the packages for the 10cc syringe, the 18-gauge needle, and the 25-gauge or 27-gauge safety needle. Don sterile gloves. Draw up 10 cc's of local anesthetic with the 18-gauge needle. After the local anesthetic is drawn into the syringe, switch to the 25-gauge or 27-gauge safety needle for performing the injection. Four nerves that run at the 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and 10 o'clock positions provide innervation to each finger, including the thumb. Identify the web space on the dorsal aspect of the hand, where the finger joins the hand. Insert a 25 or 27 gauge safety needle at the web space and advance it until the needle reaches the palmar aspect of the hand. Be careful not to exit the palmar skin. Inject 3 cc's of local anesthetic while withdrawing the needle. This helps distribute the anesthetic reaching both nerves in the process. 
repeat the injection on the other side of the finger. Recently, the volar approach to digital nerve blockade has been discussed as an alternative to the traditional digital nerve block. Advantages of this technique include fast onset of reliable anesthesia with only a single injection, examine the palmar surface of the hand, and identify the crease where the digit meets the palm. Insert a 25 or 27 gauge safety needle into the midpoint of this crease. Aspirate, then inject 3 cc of local anesthetic subcutaneously. In this process, the anesthetic is distributed to all four nerves from the one injection. Three nerves innervate the hand, the radial, median, and ulnar nerves. The superficial branch of the radial nerve divides into terminal branches at the wrist and provides sensation to the dorsal surface of the wrist, the radial styloid, and the anatomical snuff box. The sensory distribution of the radial nerve is shown in red. The median nerve becomes superficial near the wrist and lies beneath the flexor retinaculum in the carpal tunnel. The median nerve provides sensation to the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and half of the ring finger. The nerve does not innervate the dorsal aspect of the thumb or the corresponding area of the palm. The sensory distribution of the median nerve is shown in blue. The ulnar nerve is located medial to the ulnar artery at the wrist and provides sensation to the entire fifth digit, half of the fourth digit, and the medial aspect of the hand and wrist. The sensory distribution of the ulnar nerve is shown in yellow. These nerves can be blocked independently or in conjunction with one another as necessary to provide anesthesia to different parts of the hand. To block the radial nerve, identify the radial artery and radial styloid through palpation. Insert a 25 or 27 gauge safety needle at the level of the radial styloid, directly lateral to the radial artery. Inject 3 cc of local anesthetic. Subcutaneously inject an additional 5 cc of local anesthetic along the dorsum of the wrist until you reach the dorsal midline. To block the median nerve, first identify the palmaris longus. To do so, it can be helpful to have the patient oppose the thumb to the fifth digit while flexing at the wrist. This should make the tendon appear more prominent. Insert a 25 or 27 gauge safety needle 2.5 centimeters proximal to the wrist crease between the tendons of the palmaris longus and the flexor carpi radialis. The palmaris longus tendon may not be present in all patients. If absent, the nerve can usually be found on the ulnar side of the flexor carpi radialis. The needle should be advanced until it pierces the fascia, which usually occurs between 3 mm and 5 mm of the advance. It is not uncommon to feel a click or a pop as the needle pierces the fascia. Inject another 3 to 5 cc of local anesthetic. Intermittently aspirate after every 1 to 2 cc are injected to check for blood. If on injection the patient reports severe pain, a sense of electrical buzzing or shock, or pain that shoots or radiates into the fingers, the needle should be withdrawn to prevent intraneural injection. If the injection causes a subcutaneous wheel, then the needle placement is too superficial. To block the ulnar nerve, identify the ulnar aspect of the wrist. Insert a 25 or 27 gauge safety needle beneath the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris, just above the styloid process of the ulna. Advance the needle 5 to 10 millimeters and then inject 3 to 5 cc of local anesthetic. Intermittently aspirate to check for blood. If blood is aspirated, the needle should be repositioned. If the patient reports severe pain or electrical or shooting pain in the fifth or fourth digit, stop the injection. To numb the cutaneous branches of the ulnar nerve, Subcutaneously inject 5 cc of local anesthetic along the midline of the dorsal aspect of the wrist just distal to the ulnar styloid. Inform the patient that the effect of the local anesthetic will wane in 3 to 30 hours, depending on the anesthetic used. Explain that as the anesthesia wanes, the pain may increase. Ask the patient to protect the hand until the effect of the anesthetic has worn off to prevent further injury. Standard pain medications, including acetaminophen and non-steroidal and opioid analgesics, may be prescribed for post-procedure pain once the effect of the local anesthetic wanes. Finally, tell the patient to contact you if the numbness has not resolved within 24 to 48 hours. Persistent numbness may indicate nerve injury, which should be addressed as soon as possible after the procedure. The overall risk associated with peripheral nerve block is small. However, nerve damage may occur. The patient may have an adverse reaction to the local anesthetic, such as an allergic reaction, or the attempt at nerve block may be unsuccessful. 
When injecting local anesthetics, it is optimal but not necessary to have adequate monitoring and resuscitation equipment be on hand while administering the block, since there is a risk of systemic toxicity ranging from neurotoxicity to cardiovascular collapse. Consider using a premixed lidocaine solution with epinephrine for the injection. The use of epinephrine with lidocaine will aid in the detection of inadvertent intravascular injection, which is manifested by an increase in heart rate. However, epinephrine should not be used in a digital nerve block. In the event of inadvertent intravascular injection of toxic doses of local anesthetic, the administration of intravenous 20% lipid emulsion has been shown to reverse the cardiotoxic effects of local anesthetics such as bupivacaine. Intravenous 20% lipid emulsion and resuscitation equipment used to treat the adverse effects of a local anesthetic toxicity should be readily available anytime potentially toxic amounts of local anesthetics are injected. For these blocks, sedation of the patient is performed at the discretion of the practitioner and is beyond the scope of this video. If sedation is needed, refer to your institution's sedation policy. Note, however, that only minimal sedation is recommended for this procedure, given the need for good communication. Local anesthetic agents for superficial hand lacerations can be administered at the finger or at the wrist. This provides pain relief for the patient and facilitates repair of lacerations. 